In this video, I'm gonna show you a really cool trick for how you can apply rim lighting to your objects in Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you how we can take a simple layer like this and get it to this with just a few clicks. Okay, so end result, I always do this. Uh, I like to start with the finished product. So you can kind of see what you're gonna get from this tutorial. Uh, and then we'll wind back all the layers in this and show you how you can do this effect. It's really, really easy. So a um, couple of bits for setup first. I've got a little background here. Uh, got our friend Captain Marvel here. Uh, the effect I've got is actually applied within this smart group. So we can take a quick look in that because I've got a couple of things in there, like I've got a couple of um, extra lighting effects, but this rim lighting effect I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you in here. So I've done another copy of the, I guess, raw extraction of Cap Marvel here. This is really nothing special. This was a picture I grabbed off the hot toys website that make this um figure and you can see it's it's nothing special this is 100 percent in photoshop here so pretty low quality jpeg not the kind of thing i like working with you know i'd rather be doing high res camera green screen and getting a good extraction but hey we work with what we've got right as a war machine would say so yeah did a simple extraction around that and that's what I'm working with for this tutorial. So what we're gonna do is quite quickly go from what you're seeing here on the right to the rim light effect um, that I've got on the left. Now there's a couple of other things going on. Um, on the left, a bit of blur, extra bit of colorization, which I'll talk through as well. Um, but for the most part, most of this effect is about what we're doing here. So. You do need an extraction like this. You do need a good quality extraction from whatever you're working with. It's not gonna work you know, if, if you're just doing a straight picture. So let's get started. The way you do this is go to blending options and simply choose an inner glow to start with, okay? And you're probably thinking, oh, is that all there is to it? Am I, am I just gonna do an inner glow? Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. So you, you see that? that, that's kind of the baseline of our effect. You can play with the other settings in here if you wish. I wouldn't worry too much about opacity because you're gonna be able to dial that down on the layer in a moment. But really the bit that makes this way, way, way better is when you render this out. So if I right click and go create layer, then what it's now done is it's turned that effect into a solid layer of white that's clipped to the shape of our Captain Marvel selection, but it's kept the sort of feathering out of the white um, that, that's obviously transparent in the middle where her body is. So if that makes sense, you can just see from the sort of thumbnail of the layer there, it's all white around her except for around her body, and then that's clipped to her layer beneath. So if I actually released that, if I do release clipping mark, you, you've got a better idea what that looks like. I'm gonna put that back, hold Alt down, click there. Now, here's the cool bit. We right click this white layer, now we've created it, go back to blending options, and then in here what you wanna do is blend if. And if you're not familiar with Blend If, what this will do is stop this effect occurring based on the luminosity levels of the layer beneath or indeed the layer that you're applying it to. Now, the layer we're applying it, or, or I should say the layer that's being applied is entirely white. So this top layer will not do anything. It's only the bottom layer, the under the underlying layer we're interested in. So you can grab this and move it back and forth and you can see that kind of backs this effect away. But as I'm doing that, you can see it's kind of jaggy and it looks horrid. So notice this sort of two points here on this slider we can drag. Now, if you hold your Alt or Option key down, you gotta just slightly get your cursor over the right side and then it splits. And then what you can do is just bring it up gradually and look what happens. 
what happens is that rim light effect goes away in the shadows, but it stays in the highlights. Yeah. So there's more kind of light around her hair. And then some of her edges already had a little bit of light. But areas that were dark, like the side there and um, down her arm, etc., that effect's fallen away. So it's much, much more realistic. So this is what you can do with this. And you can sort of back this back and forth to your heart's content and dial in kind of a perfect rim light effect. Now, I wouldn't just do this in isolation. What's going to happen is you'll apply this. We'll click OK. Let's just turn off our other Captain Marvel there. Um, and immediately you'll notice areas that don't quite look right. Like there's there's just areas that pick up light that look unnatural, like they wouldn't have light depending on, um, you know, say the background you're trying to integrate the effect with. So that's dead simple. Remember, this is just a layer of white. It's just a white color. And all we've done is apply blend if to say, hey, don't apply it in the shadows. So I can pop a layer mask on this, just get my brush, black, and say I didn't want it on her, say inside her hips here, like we probably wouldn't want light here. I can just get black paint and mask that out. Do the same towards her hip there. You can see I can just back it away. I'll undo that. So I'm working with, I'm assuming quite a hard brush here. Yeah, let's make that a bit softer. Uh, you could probably take the flow down and then gradually just sort of work that in so it so it keeps some of the effect, but then allows you to control it. Point being, although this is a little bit of a manual touch-up, it's way, way quicker than if you were trying to go around and paint this in manually, and you get this great effect. It's worth doing twice as well. So I did a sort of reserved, you know, say 10 pixel in a shadow, I could do exactly the same thing again. So right click, blending options, put another inner glow on. You can see it's come back with the settings from before. This time I'm gonna make it quite a lot bigger. Once again, create layer. And so it's applied that one as well. And then on this one, go back to blending options, get that underlying layer, hold Alt or Option down, and start pulling this one out as well. So I might wanna do different things with this one. Maybe I'll back the opacity off of this one a little bit. Maybe I'll bring that down so it creates a little bit more highlight. But yeah, I'll, I'll back the opacity off so it's not quite as bright as the one right on the edge. And then again, I could put a layer mask on that, get my brush, bit too much going on in the hair at the top. Just come around some spots where I don't want it to appear as much. Maybe the thigh there. And you've got a lot of control. This is the way I do it. Dead easy. Going further, what you might want to do is colorize your rim light. If you think about what we've done, we've just got a white layer that's clipped to our subject. So if you wanted to colorize this, all you've got to do is paint on it. So I could come in here, say I wanted a red light coming from the side. Uh, maybe we'll go this side because there's obviously red light here. Um, I'm gonna dial the flow way down. I'm gonna start with four, make the brush a bit bigger, and I'm gonna paint directly on this side. You can see I'm just bringing a bit of red and it's only applying to that rim light effect. And remember, because of the blend if, it's only going to touch the highlights and it's going to leave the shadows completely alone. Might take the brush down, get it a little bit more intense right on the edges. And there you go. Just bring in a little bit of red rim, rim light. On this side, I've got this sort of more yellowy light source i could sort of play off that a bit on this side colorize that rim light exactly the same as the light source coming from the middle we've got this white coming in at the top which might suit her hair a bit better and then at her side it will make sense that this light is hitting her side more 
same on her inner leg. We could go back to that red for her leg this side. I mean, this is very, very rough. It's um, something I probably spend quite a bit more time on, but you get the idea. Very, very simple, very, very effective. So that's pretty much all there is to it. With my original layer there, I've given it a slightly different treatment. One of the things I did with this was use this trick I've done over and over again with the blur gallery with field blur. And that is how I kind of blend the edges in with the backdrops. So composites like this just blend a whole lot better than the sort of sharpness you get with doing a selection like this. Uh, so I'll show you that quickly. To do that, you've got to get everything in a smart object because all this work I've just done with the uh, clipping layers here with these color uh, layers we've painted on. I want to combine all these. I mean, you could combine all these together, Command or Control E and combine the layers, but you might come back and decide you want to sort of play around with those um, painting layers. So I'm going to convert all this into a smart object. There it is. Took me a while. It was almost one of those pause the video, figure out where it's gone, resume the video kind of moments, but it's okay. We made it. Then we got a filter, blur gallery, field blur. And then what I do here is pop on a few of these blur points and I'll dial these down to zero on the inside of her body. Idea being that it keeps her body completely in focus because obviously we don't want to lose any detail with the blurring. Once you've got those in, that kind of anchor her um, sharpness, so to speak, you can then place ones outside that have a little bit of blur, blur on them. Now that's way too much. And you don't need a lot, like even there, what's that, five pixels? Do another one down here. We'll make this say four. And I'm not gonna go around the whole image, but suffice to say, you get the idea, just bringing these in and kind of moving them around just affects the Im edges of the image and that will blur it in with the background. The thing I like about this is it creates a really kind of graduated blur between um, your subject and the background. It's not even, like you couldn't do this with Gaussian blur because the blur is applied kind of dynamically from these points where you introduce a bit of blur to the points where you say, hey, I don't want any blur here. So it's very, very powerful effect. Way, way more powerful than Gaussian blur. Let's move our other one out the way. And you can kind of see how that's been applied there. Now, if you don't like it, if you don't like what Photoshop's done, you can go back in because it's a smart layer. Double click on the blur gallery there. And you've got all those points you can move around and play around with uh, again and tweak them until you like the result. So that then picks up all those uh, rim light effects and just feathers those out as well with the background. Uh, and yeah, you get this really nice effect. Obviously this one I had at the start, I've spent a little bit more time on, but it's exactly the same. You can see I've just matched some of the colors to kind of work with that background projecting light but it's very, very much the same deal. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you like this, there are plenty of others on the channel, just like this, where I teach you little Photoshop tricks like this that will help you advance what you're doing and get great results. So please click on the videos tab on the channel uh, and check out some of my previous tutorials. Make sure you hit subscribe because I've got a really, really special video just for subscribers and you're going to want to watch that. So if you hit subscribe and then head over to the channel page, you can watch that subscriber only video. Lastly, head over to shoot.toys in your browser. There's a link below in the subscription here on YouTube uh, and you can sign up for my free newsletter where I give away even more free stuff. So I hope that's all helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. 
Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.